Here I have an application that is riddled with security vulnerabilities and finding them can be quite a challenge. Well, in this episode, I want to show you the Breakman gem, which will alert you of common security problems. So here's how Breakman works. It will scan the Ruby code of your Rails application and look for common problems that might represent a security issue. It isn't foolproof, but it definitely helps track down some nasty vulnerabilities. Let's see what's involved in using it in a Rails app. First, I'll install it with gem install Breakman. And then if you're on Ruby end, like I am here, you might need to run rehash so you can access the Breakman command. So with that done, just change into the directory of your Rails app and run the Breakman command. And this will analyze the source code and then print out a report. Already done, it's quite fast. So this found several issues, but before I get into the details, let's take a look at the HTML report because it has some extra niceties. All you have to do is call the Breakman command, but then pass in the dash O flag and then give it a name such as breakman.html. And if you end it in the HTML extension, it will make an HTML report. And then I'll open that up in a browser. So at the top here, it uh, tells you what different checks that Breakman performed. And as you can see, there are quite a lot, which is really nice. And then it gives you a summary of the results. Uh, but the really good stuff is down here where it tells you the details of the issues that it found. So the first column here is a confidence rating, which will tell you how sure that Breakman is that this is a security issue. And then it tells you the location of the problem, then the type of problem it is and then a detailed message. And in the HTML format, if you click on the message, it will give you the source code surrounding that area. So that's really nice to have that directly in line. So let's go through these issues one at a time. I'm actually going to start with the second one here uh, because it's specific to the version of Rails I'm using. It noticed I'm using 3.2.5, but uh, there's an important security fix in version 3.2.6, which was only released a few days ago. So it's nice to see that Breakman is staying up to date with security fixes and I should just upgrade to this to remove this warning. So that's quite easy, just going to my gem file, I'll change the version here to 326. And then I need to run the bundle update rails command to get that latest version. And then I'll run that breakman command again to generate that HTML report. And now when I reload this report, it no longer gives me that warning. So let's take a look at this next one. It says we have a mass assignment vulnerability when creating a new user. And there's a related one down below here that says attribute accessible isn't set on the user model where it should be. Now, if you're ever unsure of what the report is talking about, check out the Breakman documentation. It's quite nice. Uh, there are various articles here, including a whole section on warning types, which will give you a detailed instructions on several different types of security issues that Breakman will, will report, including one on mass assignment, which talks all about it and what the vulnerability is and how to solve it in a Rails 3.1 and newer, you could just set this in your application a config. And notice that there's a option to skip protection when you're creating a new instance, but it will also warn about that case. So Breakman does cover you pretty nicely. So I'll just go to my application config file and enable that option that was mentioned in the documentation, which is right here. I'll just comment this. Uh, this is actually enabled by default in new Rails apps, but perhaps you're upgrading from an older version of Rails and you forget to enable this. Uh, Breakman is a nice reminder. Now when doing this, don't forget to enable attribute accessible on any models that don't have it, such as this user model here, which uh, Breakman warned us about. I'll paste this in to add that attribute accessible line for any attributes that the user needs to set through the form. Now off camera, I regenerated the report, so I'll hit reload here, and now it no longer warns us about the mass assignment problem. So next up, it looks like I have an SQL injection vulnerability, which is quite serious, and that's appearing in the products controller index action. So checking out the source code for that index action, you can see I'm inserting a user parameter directly into an order SQL clause. Yeah, probably not a good idea. So a fix for that could be something like this, where I'm checking the user parameter direction to see if it's descending and then setting the direction to a static string and then only using that inside of the SQL. So Breakman is smart enough to know that params values are dangerous, but these other strings that I'm setting the value to are not, and that's just what I'm using in the SQL. So with that fix in place, I regenerate the report and the issue's gone. So this next one is telling me it's a weak confidence, so it might not be an issue, but it's a good idea to investigate anyway. Uh, the warning type is redirect, and it says it's a possibly unprotected redirect inside of my sessions controller create action. Now the documentation goes into some further detail on this one, 
Basically, if you're redirecting based off of a user parameter, then you're subject to phishing attacks because an evil site might be set up that looks identical to yours, and they might redirect users to that evil site. And uh, so let's say someone signs in through your application. It's successful, but it redirects to the evil site that says the password was invalid and they have to retype it in. So you're basically setting yourself up to phishing attacks because the user types it in again, but on the evil site. To protect yourself, you can uh, just add this only path option to your redirect to call, and this will uh, require the redirect be within your application. So in this case, I'm redirecting based off of a session's return to URL, which can be set from a parameter in the new action. So to protect from this, I'll just pass in that only path option, set that to true, and I should be good to go. And when I regenerate the report, that issue is gone, so only one more to go. And this one's pretty easy. Basically, it's saying there's an insufficient validation in my user model because I'm using caret and dollar signs as anchors in my regular expression instead of a backslash A and Z. So looking inside of my user model, I have a validates format of call, which checks this regular expression. But users can fool this by inserting new lines because this only checks the boundaries of a line and not the full text. So to check the full text, just use backslash A and backslash Z as the endpoints and anchors of your regular expression. And now when I regenerate the report, yay, we have no more issues. So does this mean our app is now fully secure? Not at all. There are several things that Breakman cannot detect, so it's a good idea to always be on the lookout for new security issues. A Breakman is a great tool, but use it as a way to find potential security issues and not rely on it completely. Now there's a lot to Breakman, which I haven't shown you so far. If you check out the readme, you can see a whole list of options which you can pass to the command. You can really use this to customize how it runs the report. Now if you want to run Breakman through a rake task, you can pass the double dash rake option and it will generate a rake file in your Rails application. So this generated task serves as a nice example of how you can run Breakman from within Ruby. And you can pass in various options to really customize the report and make it consistent for your application. And uh, if you want to run this command though, you'll need to add the Breakman gem to your gem file. I'll just add it to the bottom here. And then you'll probably want to specify the group and set that to development. Now another way to run Breakman is using guard, which I covered in episode 264. Basically this will automatically run Breakman whenever you make a change to a file. Now to set this up, you can just add it to your gem file and then run guard init Breakman uh, to configure it. Now I did have a few problems getting this working on my system, but hopefully those issues will be fixed soon. Well that's it for this episode on Breakman. It's a great way to find potential security vulnerabilities on your Rails app. Be sure to check out the documentation for more details and also the contributing guide if you're interested in helping out with the project. Thanks for watching. In this week's pro episode, I will show you how to integrate Twitter into a Rails app. There you will learn how to fetch data from the API and cache it, and even how to authenticate as a user who is signed into your application. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.